Now, in order to understand how a laser works, you need to know about some atomic processes that happen inside the atom. And what I'm going to do is use this thing here to be my electron. Uh, we're going to have different photons at different times. I'm just going to use these smaller bits here to be my photons. And effectively, what you have is the electron around the outside of the atom. It doesn't just stay in one place. And what it can do is it can sit in different energy levels. So I've got some other videos about this. But effectively, what we have is maybe the ground state, which is the most stable. And what we can then do is we can excite the electron to different energy levels. And eventually, maybe it even leaves, which is where you get things like the photoelectric effect and the, these photoelectrons given out. But basically, the electrons can only sit at certain distinct levels, and they can't sit at one place in between. And what we're going to look at, first of all, is what happens if a photon is absorbed by an atom. So what we can think about is we have different energy levels that the electrons can be in. And the one at the bottom is called the ground state, which is where the electron likes to sit. But it can also be excited into the excited state. Now what happens is if you have some light, um, if it's exactly the right amount of energy, and you've got to remember that E is equal to HF, so the energy of the photon of light depends upon its frequency. If that frequency is just right, what it can do is that uh, the atom can absorb the photon of light, and it's the electron which absorbs it, and then it moves up to an excited state. And uh, effectively we can represent this on the diagram by drawing my photon that's coming in a bit like this, because it's a little packet of light that has wave-like properties. So this is my photon that comes in. And then what happens is the electron moves up from the ground state to an excited state. But the other thing can happen. We can also get what we call a spontaneous emission of light. And this is very much when the, the opposite happens. What you have is you have an atom which is excited, perhaps it's a uh, uh, for whatever reason, maybe it's absorbed a photon before, maybe there's some electricity or something like that. And what happens is the electron drops from the higher level down to the lower level, from the excited down to the ground state. And as it drops down this level here, it then emits a photon of light. And basically, you can think of these as being the opposite things. Absorption of light and then the spontaneous emission of light. And the colour of light that's given off, or the, the kind of energy of the photon, depends upon this energy gap. And it can't be anything else. So these are the first two processes. But there's a third one which Einstein uh, postulated uh, in about 1916, 1917. Now, stimulated emission happens when you have uh, an atom in the excited state, and this is where the electron is. And what happens is that if you have a photon that comes in, this actually causes this electron to drop down. And uh, as this moves down from the excited down to the ground state, it gives out a further photon of light. So one photon of light comes in, and then two photons of light come out. Now the important thing is that these photons that are given out both travel off in the same direction and they're both in phase, which means if we think about the kind of the wave-like properties, uh, they're both up at the same time and both down. So the two things, the two waves, are kind of completely in time with each other. Why does it do this? Well, you know, we've got to think that this photon is, uh, you know, it's, it's like an electromagnetic wave. And it's the electromagnetic field from this photon that uh, causes a force on this charged particles. You know, there's this link between electricity and magnetism, uh, charged particles, uh, and so on. And basically, this thing here, what it does, and it has to be exactly the right kind of photon, so the energy of this photon has to be the same as the energy uh, drop of the electron. Um, this thing here basically just disturbs the status quo and it drops down and it gives out two photons. This is stimulated emission and it's absolutely key to understand this when we come to look at lasers and actually how they work.